Hello, my name is Ian Struthers and I'm the Technical Manager for MIS here at Trimble. Today's Tips and Tricks video covers the latest dashboard to be released in EPM Go, fondly known as the Shipping Calendar. The existing shipping tools within EPM and EPM Go are great and are really well used by many of our customers, although you are limited to managing the loads for a single job at any one time, which in some circumstances doesn't provide users with a bigger picture. With this in mind, we have created the Shipping Calendar offering a bird's eye view of your transportation requirements and allowing you to view every load for every job in a single screen with its expected shipping date and current loading status. Not only does it provide unrivaled visibility but it also allows you to schedule and reschedule loads directly on the calendar, identify which assemblies still need to be loaded and where they are in the shop and pull up the shipping destination on Google Maps giving you complete control of each and every load. To use the shipping calendar, you must first ensure that your user has been granted permission to the shipping dashboard within the Administration Remote Permission screen. You must also be running version 2021 SB2 or later. Now you may have noticed the new planned ship date field on the load screen, which was introduced in version 2021 in anticipation of the shipping calendar. If you enter a date in this field for loads you are creating, the load will automatically be added to the calendar on the specified date. That said, you do not need to select a planned shipping date here to be able to make use of the shipping calendar, as you're able to schedule the load directly on the calendar itself, which I'll come on to shortly. The shipping calendar can be accessed from your EPM Go site using the menu at the top left and selecting the dashboards option. From there, select the calendar option under the shipping icon and the page will open. You can view the calendar by year, month, week or day and can scroll through the dates using the date picker. There are a few additional options within the settings page that allow you to set the preferred units of measure and the first day of the week. And there is also a filter option allowing you to set filters on things like job, destination and status. I am going to start in the month view and I can see all of the loads that have already been planned in June. By default, the calendar is colour coded by the status of each load and I can turn on the legend from the colour by menu at the top right. Here I can see that all of the loads scheduled for last week were successfully dispatched with the exception of this one load which is flagged as late or overdue. From the progress bar I can see the load is 95% complete which is based on the assemblies that have already been marked as loaded. I can click on the load to see a few more details such as where the load is going to and the trailer and carrier being used. To delve a bit deeper I can select the load details option from the load menu which shows all of the individual assemblies assigned to the load and allows me to identify which ones still need to be loaded. Once the load has been fully built and marked as shipped the calendar will update the load status and reflect the actual day the load was dispatched. I am now going to switch into week view and focus specifically on the loads that need to be shipped this week. I can see that some of the loads due for dispatch today have already been shipped along with a few that are still being built. As we saw a few moments ago, I am going to open the load details option from the load menu. This time I am going to filter the list of assemblies to just those that still need to be loaded. From here I can select the status button, which will show me exactly where each assembly is within the fabrication workflow. Here I can see assembly mark 15062 has not yet been painted and 15063 still needs to be inspected before going to the paint shop, giving me the visibility I need to expedite these items to ensure they are dispatched on time to avoid any costly delays on site. You are able to customise this screen using the field settings option, selecting the data columns that you do and don't want to see and the order in which they should appear. You can also export the load list to various file formats from the same menu. Another handy feature from this screen is the ability to map the destination within Google Maps, so when the load is ready to be shipped, the driver can plan the best route and maybe even avoid the traffic. Again, once the load has been shipped, the calendar will be updated and now we can see it has turned green. On that note, I can change the colour coding of the loads as it doesn't always need to be by status. From the colour by menu, 
I can alternatively select to colour by trailer, destination, carrier and job. All of these bring their own benefits. For example, when viewing by trailer, I can see if a particular trailer has been double booked. As you can see, I have here with trailer PowerFab 1 being used for both load 105 on job J2030 and load 3 on job J2100. I would obviously need to make alternative arrangements to prevent any delays. When viewing by destination, I can see if I have loads from different jobs going to the same galvaniser, for example, allowing me to combine the shipment and reduce costs. Or maybe I simply want to see all of the loads for a given job to make sure I'm on schedule and can use the legend to temporarily hide all other jobs. OK, so far we've looked at how we can view and manage loads we've previously planned using the planned shipping date on the load details screen within Tech EPM itself. But if we're not using this field, we can still add unplanned loads directly onto the calendar. If I click on the Add Loads button, a side panel appears on the right hand side showing me all of the unshipped loads that have not yet been scheduled. As previously seen, I can click on the load to see some additional details and for more information I can open the load details screen. The unplanned loads can be filtered by both destination and job, making it easy to schedule deliveries. If I filter specifically for job J2100, I can see there's only one load that needs to be planned. To do this, I can either click on the load menu, select the schedule option and enter the required date. Alternatively, I can turn on the drag and drop tool and simply drag the load onto the required day. Please note that the performance of the drag and drop tool may vary across different platforms and devices. Given that I can see load 4G is going to the galvanizer this Friday, I will schedule this for next Wednesday. And if I just go back into EPM and open up the corresponding load, you can see that the planned ship date has been updated to reflect the changes made. Unplanned loads also get colour coded in the same way that the already planned loads are. So if I select a colour by destination, I can see I have two loads on different jobs that need to go to wedge galvanising. If I expand both the loads, I can see they are both due to be collected by the galvaniser, but are currently allocated to separate trailers. Looking at the weights, I know these can be shipped on the same trailer, which will in turn reduce the project costs. I'll just finish by scheduling the two loads onto the calendar. Using the same tools, I am also able to unschedule and reschedule loads on the calendar. To unschedule a load, I simply select the unschedule option from the load menu, and this will be added back onto the list of unplanned loads on the right hand side. Similarly, to reschedule a load, I can select reschedule from the load menu and select the new date, or with a drag and drop option enabled, I can drag the load to the new date. That concludes today's tips and tricks on the shipping calendar dashboard. I hope it's been interesting and informative. If you have any questions, please contact your local support office.